Hi, my name is Tom Mavro and welcome to the Cut It TV training channel. The channel has been set up to provide easy to follow training tutorials in today's key media production software. Cut It itself is a UK based training company with over 15 years experience providing hands on training in media production. If you would like any further information about our training services, please visit our website at www.cut-it.tv or check us out on social media. I hope you enjoy the following tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to have a look at time remapping. This is the ability to create variable speed effects within the same clip, so i.e. speed a section of a clip up, slow another section of the same clip down. There is a general order to approach this in, and if you follow this order, the time remapping will work very nicely. So I've got a clip on the timeline here, I'm gonna put some variable speed effects on. First of all, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit on the clip itself, just by hitting backslash there, just to stretch it out on the timeline so we can see it in a little bit more detail. And I'm also going to make sure that I've got my effects controls tab open here and the clip selected so I'm seeing the effects controls for the clip itself. The key control here is an intrinsic effect and it's this time remapping one. I'm just gonna open that up. Now before starting this, it's a good idea just to optimize slightly your interface. So I'm gonna do a couple of things here. First of all, I'm gonna make this window a little bit bigger. Secondly, I'm just gonna to move to the divider here between the controls area and the timeline area of the effects controls window. I'm just gonna drag that slightly to the left. Just to give me a slightly bigger timeline. The timeline area is quite important for this. Obviously the bigger the monitor, the better resolution you've got, the easier this is gonna be. There's a graph area here that's very important. And so that I can see this also in more detail and have more control over this, I'm going to expand it vertically. Now you do this by moving just to the little line here at the bottom of the graph area, just to next to this little number here and I get a little trim symbol. I'm just gonna drag that down and I'm gonna drag that down as far as I can within the space I've got for the window. In fact, let's just make the window just a tiny bit taller, drag that down a little bit more. You'll see the advantage of that in a minute. The time remapping option is like opacity, one of the intrinsic effects that is already set up to keyframe, hence this blue stopwatch icon here. The process should be as follows. You first of all decide where in the clip you want the speed changes to occur. So just to give you an idea, what we'll do is we'll start off by having a fast section up to about here in the clip, so about a third of the way through. Then we'll have a slow section, then we'll have another fast section, and then we'll end up normal speed for the last bit. So we'll go from maybe 200% speed down to say 25%, back up to 200%, 100% for that last bit. So you decide where you want your speed changes to occur, you then go through and you make keyframes on those frames where the speed changes are gonna occur. So I'm gonna bring my playhead forwards to about 25% of the way through the clip. And to create the keyframe itself, I come up here into the effects controls tab and hit this button, the add or remove keyframe button. This will either add a keyframe at the playhead position or if a playhead is already on a keyframe, also remove it. These little arrows either side of this button allow you to jump the playhead from keyframe to keyframe. So there's my first keyframe. The keyframes for time remapping look a little bit different to the normal keyframes that will get created in the effects controls tab. That's because they have an additional function that you don't normally get on any other keyframe, which you will see later. Okay, let's go through to the next speed change. So we'll go say about here, about just a little bit over halfway through, click the button again. Let's go about three quarters of the way through, click the button again. So these are my three changes of speed. So up to this first keyframe, 200%, we'll go 25% between these two, 200% again here, 100% here. Once you've created your points of change, you then go through and adjust the speed of each section. And to do this, you move over this line here and you push it up to increase the speed or down to reduce the speed. It's a very good idea to have your playhead at the start of the section. Because as you're making an adjustment, if your playhead is not on the section, over here where it tells you the new percent speed percentage, you don't see that change. It's only ever showing you the speed for the section that the playhead is over. So look, I'm going to push this one up. Now as I push it up and let go, you'll see that number change. Unfortunately, you can't click in here and actually type in the value you want. You have to push the line up. So I'm going to push it up a little bit further. You see it changing again. And I'm going to get it hopefully up to 200. It just needs to come down a couple of percent there. There we go, 200. So that is now 200%. 
that has compressed that section and also made it shorter because it speeded it up. Okay, now we jump the playhead to the start of the next section. So I can use my arrows here to jump from keyframe to keyframe, jump to the start of the next section. As you can see, that still says 100 because this section is still at 100% speed. And we're going to slow this one down. Now, by slowing it down, it makes the section longer. You can see it's also on the timeline, makes the clip longer. So let's get that down to 25%. You know, there we go. Jump to the start of the next section, push this one up to 200. There we go. And we're going to leave the last section it is, as it is at 100. So if I play that back now, we're going 200, 25, 200, normal. Once you've made your changes, you might want to further adjust the speed of some of the sections. So if I say, for example, wanted to increase the speed of this third section, I can just come back over. I can just push that up. Let's maybe push it up to like 300. There we go. So that's got even faster. And if you wanted to, you could leave it there. However, you might not want very abrupt changes in speed. You might want to be able to smooth those changes and create an area of ramping where it goes from one speed to the next over a period of time. And this is where these special keyframes come in. The keyframes themselves have two little handles on them and you can click on these handles, you can drag them out. As you drag them out, what it does is it creates a fade area where it changes from the one speed to the next. And depending on how long you make that, that changing speed will take more or less time. So look, if I just play that back now, it's not going to suddenly go from 200 to 25. It's going to slow down a little bit more smoothly. If I make that longer, that change will be smoother. So what I would usually do if I want this is go through and then just create a little area of ramping there on all of the speed changes. Let's have a little look at that now. So 200 slows down to 25 speeds back up again to 300 and then normal at the end let's say let's maybe make that section there a little bit longer and finally you can then smooth these ramping areas so instead of them being a linear fade between the two speeds you can create a bit of a curve which just even further smooths the change in speed to do this you click on the relevant keyframe it gives you a little handle here you click on the handles and you drag and you can you see that changes out from a straight line into what's called an S curve. So instead of it starting to change the speed there, but changing at a constant speed to there, the change is then starting a bit slower, the change speeds up and the change slows down again. So again, usually if I'm doing a bit of ramping like this, I would just go through and tweak the little handles and create a nice little curved graph there. And that further smooths the whole thing. Final part of this would be then to choose my method of interpolation. I'm going to go frame blending this time by doing a right click speed duration. And then also to see that properly, I would then need to render that. So we'll just go render selection. That would render that out. And there's the uh, final result. In fact, let's just loop the playback there. Do that again. And there's my final result.